Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Beyer. Hi, Dave. How you doing? Hi. This is This and That. Um, before we start, you know, we always start on such a light note. You know, we have really tragic news that we have to discuss is that Alexandra Paul was killed in a car accident uh, this week in Canada. Um, it was something that had was bandied about on Twitter and people thought it was going to be someone else and and it was her and, and it's so so tragic um, 31 31 years old that's just in the tragic. car luckily the baby is okay um there is a gofundme for people who want to help out mitch um you know is a single parent now our hearts go out to them so i'm going to uh include the link uh in the description box so that way you can um you know support in, in any way that you can i haven't looked at it yet i'm going to do it it's on my list of things to do for today and I think everyone, you know, our hearts are just, you know, bleeding yeah. for Mitch and this horrible, horrible thing. Always sweet people, never knew them well. Um, I saw them train when I was in Montreal in 2016. They were, this is right before they ended their careers. And it was one of those weird moments watching them because they were such lovely skaters. They went to, I just remember this so well is that they were, in the in Montreal, the, the, the rink is one size, right? But they go to that speed skating oval uh, where the Olympics were in Montreal um, once a week. And they practice, and I think it's where the speed skating team, you know, they took one of the arenas and made it a speed skating oval. And that's why you'll see like the videos of the team on that huge ice once a week. You'll see them sometimes on their Instagrams. And they were practicing there and I was watching them all do their run throughs one after another. And that's kind of like how they train. It's like part of the magic. And I think they were doing a routine to Chicago. I'm going to have to go like look through old hard drives that I have because they wound up, I think, withdrawing from competition that season or retiring that season because when Virtue and Moyer came back, which everyone was so excited for, it they were that third rank team, yeah. That moved to four, right? Because then it became like the mega teams of Virtue and Moyer, Weaver and Poge, and Gillis and Poirier. And they were such nice, lovely people and skaters. And it was sort of heartbreaking in, in watching it. And I remember it because I thought that they were so pretty, so nice. But you just knew when you were watching it, like they're the ones that are gonna... Get the show, yeah. Yeah, and not because they weren't good because the other teams were exceptional and it was so sad and they were so warm and nice and lovely and just a really positive impression of them. So I always remember like watching them. That's when I saw Olivia Smart do circles and I was like shazamming it being like, what is this song? Right. Uh, Adria couldn't do his camel spin that day. Um, that's when Papa Dawkins and Cizeron were doing their new program. So um with a woman wound up crying at world at the end, you know, yeah, that one. So, uh, yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I, I was shocked and I think everyone is so Terrible. sad. You can't yeah. believe yeah. Just, yeah. So putting the link in the description box and if you want to support um, any way you can. I do have a couple of housekeeping notes before we get in. So next weekend, I'm going to go to the Paul Wiley seminar where is he doing Maryland. it? He's doing it in Maryland. I'm going to drive down for the 4th of July weekend because I usually spend it with my friends anyway and just like Labor whatever. Day. Labor day. What? Labor Day. Labor Day. Sorry. What did I say? Wait, is he booked that far in advance? Yeah. Where, okay. What day did I say it was? 4th of July. 4th of July. <laughs> you know what it is? I was That's thinking right. of the friends that I would usually spend Labor Day with. And I was like, we also spend 4th of July together. Okay. So I was thinking in my head, oh my God, it's so funny. Yes, <laughs> Labor Day. Um, I would usually go to Asbury Park with them. But I um, they usually stay at this like gay owned hotel, The Tides. Like that's like, but like, they're, they're very upset about how it's been renovated. Like there's no longer like, you know, the man in the front with the bartender and the concierge and the front. Like, so they're like really upset that this boutique hotel is not boutique. It's in splendor, okay. right? Got it. <laughs> if they don't feel like Judy Garland walking down the steps. Then what is the point? What What is the point? And I have to tell you is that for the two of them, that's completely normal, right? They have lost touch so completely <laughs> but that's completely different. They're the ones that they were moving across town, right? 
And the one who's an organist is the one who is like so full of a character of himself. Like I feel not that intense around him, you know, or at least I, you know. Okay. And his husband's like an attorney, attorney, like working 24 hours. And I feel like sometimes I think like I mistakenly tell myself like I'm the relaxed one, right? Like we're just like a good friends. Right. So they're moving across town and Joseph goes, you know, I'm just going to have, wait, what do they have? They have a Petrov piano, right? It's a Petrov. I didn't know what brand their piano was. And like Reed was like pearl clutching. It's a Petrov. Well, it's niche. It's niche. It is niche, Jonathan, but I didn't know. I'm not from that world. Okay? That's what I mean. Yeah. Listen, I didn't think they had a shit piano. Okay. Right. <laughs> By any means. No one had ever said that. Right. So they're moving their Petrov piano across town. They decided to have it be made into a player piano that you could also play on because, you know, then they just move it for you for free and they could put it when they have dinner parties and just have it play. You oh, know, yeah. Work. I mean, technically, the- technically, mine is also a player. Like, it's a. Right. And I've been trying to, like, you know, get you to come because even though I think you might have, like, some snobby, like, debates and, like, debate each other's musicness, which, like, I have seen you get into before with people, like, Christopher Schumann, um, who also would love one of these debates. Um, I think everyone could debate together and just be around the player piano, you know, drinking a hat and doing it. And like that's- In our best Betty, Betty, Bette Davis uh, life, yeah. <laughs> that's like a Tuesday for them. And I'm just like having a seltzer doing my stretches. And they're like, oh yes, this is completely normal. Okay. <laughs> they had, they, see they're, they're renovating this like seven bedroom house that they got for no reason. They don't listen. They wanted to have everyone over for the holidays. That's why they need it, right? So like, they're ju- like, I've just like camped out at their house for days and like done my show from there and whatnot because they just like, like having people around. Yeah, that's a similar situation I'm here in Philly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you have the big house, like- w- You wanna share it, yeah. I they, have, they have some characters come in. They, had, they have a friend that's like, the epitome of blue jasmine and when she comes in like it is known okay <laughs> okay love all right yes all right so i'm going to the paul wiley seminar on labor day um and some of the people that i met at the Krigor skating camp there was a girl that grew up like 10 minutes from me i was like wait a second you're from allendale which coffee house did you go to did you go to the creepy religious one or did you go did you go to holy grounds or did you go to the other one like four doors down where it's like phoebe on friends singing in the front because these were two very different places okay one, they want to like you know convert you to become an evangelical christian over a chai tea and the other one we're and like i met these coffee houses because of, i met people on a catholic retreat in high school and yet we went to the one that was more like Phoebe Buffay singing, like that vibe. So yeah, like a That's guitar. What I would be looking for in a coffee experience. Yes, right. <laughs> it's what you need. Yeah. So very. Her name is Glenn Cora. She's fabulous. Gonna stay with her. I think Emily Deshardens, who's my good friend, is going, and she's very big. She's an adult skater, big volunteer, and she has. Um, she's so generous. Like she's housed other pair skaters to like live and train with her in her That's house. Funny. Just like. Yeah. She's just like one of those like Ann Jensen's of the Virginia area, right? Like she's- uh, Quality, yeah. I met Emily because she wrote to me asking where she could skate in New Jersey over December. And then we skated a session together like years ago. So yeah, it was like one of those situations where like mother and daughter were both skating together, like the adult skater mother and the daughter and they would do a number like, yeah, like Epic, right? Like just that kind of, like they're in deep, okay? Okay. (laughs) You know, I, I, there is a mother who's been to like every coach on the in ice dance. Like, listen, these kids are making it, right? I, and like, I like them because I appreciate fellow crazy, right? Like, so they have a they have a license plate that says "We Skate" on the back. Next level. Next and level. Like, they they were at the rink with Diana and Gleb when they were there when like Green and Parsons were leaving and all. Like, they were with Kiliakov before. And now they're with Krigor and they, the boy, uh, the older one is in junior solo dance and she's very, very good. Um, and then the boy is skating with Roman Serov and Anna, Z- I can never say. Okay, it's Slava Zagrudniuk, but Anna Zahorniuk, uh, uh, Anna Z as everyone calls her. Okay. 
now she coached at the ice house. She was married to Roman. They have this daughter, Vasilisa, and they're like this like hot young ice dance team that are one year younger than um, Igor and Kristen's daughter, who is always second in uh, intermediate ice dance behind, they're always second behind Carhartt, who bought the three partners, bought Ray, what imported, right? And there's like a much older boy in intermediate ice dance. And the girl is fabulous extension, but that it's like the, the third Carhartt. And then when, yeah, I follow the young ice dance like it's dance. Moves. Literally, I was like intermediate. We were watching Junior this year and I, or just this week. And I was like, some of these people I forgot existed. Yeah. No, no, no. When we are sitting and like tying our skates, like we go through the competition. Okay. Like this girl, Gloria and Topti, like they do solo dance. And I I will look up their results when they go. They do the patterns. They do shadow dance together. Like I am. You're in it. In it. Okay. okay. <laughs> like we are in, and like I skated with Vasilisa when she did singles at Ice House and she used to cry every session. Like she did not want to be doing singles with the parents as coaches, like how this goes. Yeah. She was always injured. I stand no injuries. Like she's like, she's just like a demon, like just yeah. winning, skating to the conga. Like she's loving her life. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got it all going. We've got Brooke Tufts getting ready for battle. You know, everyone's, you know, everyone's behind Brooke in the ring, you know, like let's go. And Brooke got sick with an ear infection and we're like, Brooke. And she's like, no, this is August. So apparently every time Brooke has like, a great skate like the sky falls out last year she had lace bite right before Kristen said get a shot I don't care if you get it in your head in your foot wherever you want a shot let's get it and let's go and get ready for nationals that's how Kristen rolls okay, okay. you're not gonna like <laughs> tell her twice okay okay this is Kristen who after she saw me compete for a year I took lessons from her and she goes oh I didn't know you could really skate She's a caller personality, okay? Yeah, I one would imagine it attracts the type. You know, one of my coaches, Kristen's a caller, and Alexei was a judge. He judged for Israel, but he judged dance and singles. So we get like the full spectrum of opinions on programs here because how a caller sees it is like very Tim Gable. Mm -hmm. How a judge sees it is very like Sandra. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's interesting. So when we discuss the Rocky program, we'll go into that. Oh, because everybody is talking. Everybody. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Doing that. And then Queen Jojo Starbuck wrote in. And she is starting her class uh, at Cody Arena in West Orange on September 14th uh, on Thursdays from 1230 to 130. And it's really for recreational skaters and above. It's for adults of all ages have done her class. I've taken it. It's wonderful. It's in Cody Arena. You have the magic of Jojo Starbuck just being like, Jonathan, push your edge into the ice. But while she's doing it, Jonathan, can you push your knee back to the corner for me? And like, you don't go upset Queen Jojo. She knows what she's talking about. Yeah. It's that era of such pure skating. Yeah. So I decided this week to like bring back an old Jojo exercise. And like, I haven't done it in years and like sent it to her. And like, I always think, cause Jojo always talks about your pearl necklace that you want to show it when you're on the ice, just have everyone see your pearl necklace. This is what the IJS skaters don't get. The people who did figures yeah. understand the ice queen era where this was important. Okay. They understand, Dorothy and Jojo see the big picture. Okay. These people today, the I they are like mules, the ones who do the IJS. Yeah. I'm sorry. You think Tuk Demisheva is going to be telling you about your pearl necklace on the ice? No. And that's why Jojo is an American icon. Okay. It's true. But whenever you meet a jo whenever you meet someone and they want to bring up Jojo's football player husband. I've always like, how dare you? That's I Jojo's didn't even know she player. had a football player. <laughs> you want to talk about him? Yeah. Are you kidding me? It would be like Dorothy Hamill and then bringing up like, well, she was married to Dino Martin. How dare you? Have you seen her since then? Like, girl, bye. Okay. Like, <laughs> stop it. All right. That's why Jojo's important. 
You need JoJo in your life, okay? Jonathan, she will get you on skates. 12.30, Thursdays. Listen. Okay. <laughs> but can you push back? And when you push back, why don't you let, let the toe pick just like push out of the ice, like a pencil leaving the paper, you know? Like she's just gonna- Like kids today even understand that reference. <laughs> it's fine, Jonathan, it's all right. But she just has such a way of describing things. She gets her point across, mm. you know? She's lovely. And then also she'll talk about like restoring her costumes or, did I ever tell you about when Dorothy Hamill called me by accident? About the sit spin? No. Oh no, thinking you were JoJo. Thinking I was JoJo yes. Starbuck. Did, yes. I, did I say this on here? We did talked I... about this on the show once, yeah. Did we? Yeah. I mean, Dorothy and JoJo talking about hand-washing Hermes scarves because that got left in my voicemail by accident. When I buy my next place, right? I will display Hermes scarves just so that I could feel like the way you just, the, the way you display well, baby. I have the Hermes scarves, the big ones, like turned into giant, like- We all need something, right? Yeah. Like I have John Curry behind me, which by the way, Dorothy, remember she doesn't have the good eyesight. Dorothy's name is on this poster. It says the John Curry Skating Company, special guest artist, Dorothy Howell from the Met. And she goes, oh, is that taller? Because the angle of this- It does, was, it has more curviness to it, which I associate with taller also. Right, so like every old school skater, when I interview them, like Shepard Clark and- um, Oh, Wiley mentioned Wiley. it, right? Yeah. yeah. They see it and they discuss it. So this week I am releasing an interview I did last week. If Shepard Clark can please send me um, the videos of him and Debbie uh, doing their um, figures. It's the last in um, my masterpiece edit because it's a love letter to figures. It's about Debbie Thomas's comeback to uh, figure skating uh, that they're gonna be doing in Lake Placid. And I interviewed her and Shepard and Shepard talks all about um, you know, the art of figures, he's competed in this event for years, why he's supporting Debbie, his views on skating, what happened when he, you know, would stay with Tyler Cranston and what they would talk about. You know, um, Shepard Clark has a Rolls Royce named Sonia Henney. And that's just regular to him, okay? <laughs> you have to know that it's- Iceberg, yeah. <laughs> listen, listen, he's a genius. He also, in the interview, I believe he has a fedora? Oh. I'm not good with the fashion hat type. So like you'd have to ask Ludwig your ass. Yeah. <laughs> Dora with a men's necktie and a feather coming at the end. Debbie oh. has pearls on. And then he's also a jewelry designer. So he has like amethyst and stuff like, listen, this is someone like you need a full on experience. We need a full documentary of Shepard and Debbie training for this competition. Okay. Which like Dorothy and Jojo and Sandra and Don Jackson are judging. And I was like, which one's the tough judge? Which one is Ooh, it? Legitimately, those people are the judges? Yeah, I'm going. I'm making you go. Beginning of October, we're going to Lake Placid. I'm going to go just to we're sit with them on the ice. Queen Oksana is coming. I told her, Oksana, I'm only coming under one condition. That we can do the beginning of the genie program of the ice together. <laughs> with you yelling at me like you're Galina Zmievskaya choreographing. Because I posted what that is like in my videos where she just yells and you just try to do. Yeah. Renee Roca wrote, exhausting. Okay, listen. <laughs> so, love love. Yeah. Who we love. Yeah. Okay. Renee Roca, who's skating with Richard Dwyer five days a week. Richard Dwyer, who's 87, practicing his figures. Like and yeah. every time I see Richard at like an event, he's just sprightly walking around. He's doing the thing. I saw him do an axle in the opening and stuff. Come on, okay. And I've always wondered about that cantilevery move he does. I wonder how he still has any sort of knee function at this point. Mr. Debonair, don't you just want to see him right now with Linda and JoJo and Ty and the old group just hanging out? Yeah. So I did launch my new series this week, Jonathan. And discuss. Did you like it? Did you get, uh, uh, what did you think it was about? Well, what I particularly liked were the, like the clips from like Alyssa or- when It's, you it's about my progress in skating, but it's really not. 
Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. It was a vehicle also to find out where some of these great people, like their mantras during certain elements, like when you were talking about Paul Wiley was talking about moving the arms towards the shin and Alyssa was like, don't go for speed at first, only go for the position, don't pull in. Like, I find that kind of stuff absolutely fascinating. So, yes. On one level, we're trying to teach people about the technical nuances of skating and we're not talking IJS people. Okay. No. I think the IJS is bullshit. I do. We're talking like real shit. Okay. So we're doing real, Jonathan. Okay. So what happened is real. Okay. I withdrew because of a trauma situation from competition last year. I did not know if I was going to ever compete again. Okay. Because the situation is going to like remove itself. Right. But I was like, I need to find that motivation to get myself to get up every day to keep improving. So I started studying because my spins were always my weakness. I started, I started studying the Lucy videos. And then around that time is when I was like, I need to interview Dorothy. And then after I interviewed Dorothy, we just like kept in touch and she would like, I would send my stuff back and forth with her. And even before I would interviewed her, we were sending clips back and forth and she was giving me like pointers because Mary Scott Fold also gave me pointers and I'm releasing that interview finally on YouTube. So you'll see, cause it's been on Patreon. So the Debbie one and Shepard is on Patreon if you want to see it without the clips. Um, so I am putting it all so Mary started writing to me about it. Belinda Noonan wrote to me about my backspin. Frank Carroll wrote to me about my backspin. And I had this idea. And then I started talking with Alyssa about the scratch spin. And then Renee was giving me stroking exercises. And Yuka Sato was giving stroking exercises. And we were sending it back and forth. And I realized that this isn't just about the technical nuances of skating. What we're actually doing is like much deeper than that. Because what this is actually about is a pure love of the sport that has been bastardized by judging systems and scandals and abuse and everything. And what I really want to come across in this series is our collective passion and love for skating. And that's what the point of this really is. The yeah. point of it is to use skating as a vehicle to discuss something much deeper that we all kind of love. Yes. And that's the pure essence of skating. So yes. that's why I did that. And, and it has like different variances because when I fired Galita, she said to me, you need a coach that's going to let you be part of the process. Of course you do. Right. Because when you're with her, you don't, right? When you're with Galena, if you work with someone else, you, she then evaluates the work that you did with that person. And it's never good enough because it wasn't what she did. Right? right. It could be better than her or not. So the way I met my coach Yuri is because Victor is like the greatest jump technician I've ever worked with. Okay. He also did what he did in Russia. These are two truths. Okay. So I needed someone. I first started working with Roman Serov and he is a phenomenal jump coach. He works with Sasha Fegan, who's doing really well in the juniors right now. He'll be in the junior Grand Prix. He was, but he goes a little more inside the circle on the axle. And Galena was like, no, we're putting the axle in the program. In March, like come hell or high water, you're gonna do it. And she would do anything she had to for 40 minutes. But over that process, I started flinching instinctively because I yeah. knew it was gonna blow up, yeah. right? So when I first went to Yuri, if I made a mistake, I'd be like this, right? Because she used to explode after each, you're not a man, what the you know, like the, just any, because that's what they believe. That is their belief system, okay? Uh, Terry, anyway, they will say whatever they need to do, right? If they need to shame you for being gay, if they need to do whatever they want, they are going to get you where, and that's their belief of what is the right thing to do. Mm. I don't well, think they're it. motivating. I, just to me as a learner, that would never motivate. I have videos of all of it. So I'm like, there's no lie here, okay? Um, I, I started working with Roman. He goes more inside the circle. She freaks out, right? Because it's not the way she does it. They go straight and then turn and do it where you put your arms. And without Victor there, I was like too panicked to do it because when she, I was in a hypervigilant state when I would work on the axle with her and didn't realize it, which is why I was getting hurt all the time. Mm. Is that I was in constant hypervigilance when she was screaming. And I didn't like realize like, oh, this is actually taking longer to get the jump. Right. Remember, I got my axle when Victor came home for Thanksgiving. Boom, got it. And then he went back to Russia and it was like, oh 
because I like, I had the Axel, I like lost it. And then he came back and it was like that panic because then like the clock is ticking, right? So like we're but putting- Again, we'll get the body tight as you're trying to yes. do these things, yeah. Yes, and I was dating someone who didn't have an Axel, who would never get one and who was toxically jealous that I was close to getting it. Mm. Okay. So that happened too. Yeah. Um, and as this goes, I'm like, I need to work with someone. So I found Yuri, who was an hour away, who was her former student. And I said, Galena, like, I need someone to help me. You know, you're such big money. You, oh, it just be like, you are such big money. Really, I needed someone that was not going to yell. But you have yeah. you feel like yeah. you're so great. But I just need someone like, just like, a, just like a, a village. Just to like maybe give you some information and have you try like, like a Like a teacher assistant, you know? Yeah. And she was like, Roman, it's fine. Yeah. Meanwhile, I was already working with Roman. She hated it, right? Because of this. Yeah. I was like, Galena, I heard your former student, Yuri Symbolyuk, is in like Brewster. It's like a little over an hour. She goes, he makes me want to take a shower. And I was like, and then I was like, what? Like, you want what? I had never heard that. Like, and then she was like, do what you would like. Any idiot could teach you to jump. And I was like, I agree, Galena, like we're doing a single act. So like, I'm sure like anyone can teach me, like, it's fine. I know this is not like a quad, do what you would like. So I waited two weeks, lost the axle, and then I did. And he has the same creativity with her, but do you know why she hates him? Because she was like a Terry with the men in Russia. Mm. She hated him because she chose Slava, Slava Zagorodnyuk to go to worlds and Europeans over him in 89, which made Slava's career. So then Yuri left her and she views that as like the ultimate disrespect. Got it. Needed to send her flowers. Yuri yeah. was an idiot. Because do you know what Yuri did? He called up Yelena Tchaikovskaya to go um, to, uh, to see if she would take him on because he had Vladimir Kochin at the Olympic, or the, the guy that had the over-the-top presentation. So, the one that like died on the ice in 88. Yeah, yeah. He didn't know that that was Galena's best friend and idol. Mm. So he went back in the rink the next day and she confronted him and it was like, ah, right? So like fascinating story there. So I was working with him the entire time I was with her at the end, but we just never talked about it. I don't know if she knew or not. Like, I don't really care. So, but that's how I landed my axle the first time is I figured out like, I need someone with the same technique. So I'm getting the same information over and over again, just not in that rate. And then eventually it was like, okay, she needs to go. So that's how that happened. But anyway, yeah, that is, and they're both like geniuses with the sequences they put together. If you saw like the sequence he did with like the spiral to the Ina Bauer to the inside loop with Yukasato. So he did that. So anyway, that's the series. That's what we're doing. And it's meant to inform yeah. and show that kind of passion about skating. So, and there's going to be new cameos from week to week of different people. So Love that. yeah. Okay. So, but it's, it's meant to have like, people that I consider like experts in each area. Yes. Like who I would- Purists, purists. Like, like if you called me for advice, this is who I would send you to for choreography or skating. So, like I told Alexa every year, use Renee Roca. Did right. we say here how many times? Use oh, I, Renee it would Roca. have been a dream, yeah. Yeah. So when Karen Kwan does my program, we're gonna film that. Cause I thought she would be perfect for this piece of music. So it's all about like pairing and doing that together. So. But Lovely. speaking of the series, did you see the Sandra Bezik trailer for I Have Nothing with Carolyn? Oh, shoot, no. What did it look oh, like? We are going to pause so you can watch it and then do it. I'm pausing this right now. Jonathan, I think this is your series. Okay. <laughs> well, I have to tell you what I appreciate about this series because in its description, it could be absolutely horrifying. Um, however... As I watch the I reality, right? So it's a, it's a docu series, but then there's improv and stand in. So they're playing caricatures of himself. So we're going to get snarky, Sandra. Yes, and even even when um, she looks to Sandra, who is listed as her mentor, and she's like, "Are you happy?" Sandra is shaking her head and saying, "Saying yes, I'm happy." <laughs> yes, and Sandra's 
one of the producers of this show. Okay, so okay. Her, but the, the yeah. list, I mean, they had Barbara and- well, You're happy that I kept my mouth shut for a year about this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does look charming. It looks but very good. I don't know like what's going to happen. And the whole point is that Sandra's done a great job of like telling everyone like this much about the show, like the mm -hmm. elevator pitch. Yeah. About, like where this goes. It's and one I would actually watch because of her. Yeah. The people they have I think this is so important to skating because again, this is pre-IJS. Because I think the problem with IJS is the product is shit for 60%, 70% of the program. So if you're not looking at ice dance or the very top men, right? right? Or the very top pairs or the very top women. So I think that when you're seeing this, you're seeing that old school product and what we all fell in love with, with the edges and the personality and the style. And it's bringing that back to Calgary. And it has that mix of like current irreverence with nostalgia, with cameos. And because, you know, you see Gordieva and you see this person was obsessed with figure skating at the 88 Olympics when Gordieva won. So of course she's like appearing now. Right. And, and she's, really choreographing. She's, she's choreographing for someone. So is she choreographing for Katya? Because you see Katya's face there. Yeah. Katya's playing like aloof Katya. Yeah, confused. <laughs> I once met Katya Gordieva and she was in a meet and greet line, exhausted. And like, I will just say that people went up to her and Katya like made it like she didn't know English that well. I've seen Katya other times completely like fabulous and wonderful, right? Like, so it's just like, so, like this, she's an Olympic champion and a star. And if she doesn't want to know Russian that five minutes, she doesn't need to. Okay, yeah, exactly. Got you going to right there. Okay, amazing. Did you catch the Paul Wiley? Did you watch the interview yet? Yeah. You oh watched. my gosh, I loved the Paul. What Wiley. Said about Arena Ronina. Like I am still dying that he actually said what so many of us think when Arena is denying the doping and all of this, and he's like, "Well, we'll see if they would have passed that drug test." You know, he really has all of the correct opinions, right? Like he really- But delivers them in a non-snarky way. So you have to listen closely in order to catch it. You know, when Valjeva tested positive for drugs, I was a Godlina student that day. Mm. The first call of the day, I told her what happened. She didn't know. She like screamed. Because remember, Elena is her best friend. Elena Tchaikovskaya, who's currently in the Russian press, she called Galina the greatest coach of all time this week. Okay. I mean, she's a genius. It's an interesting statement. <laughs> because Chico like they are like this. Galina, who was doing the pro-Ukraine fundraiser, while Victor, her son, is in his apartment, in the war. But then he went and did the show with Valjeva, but anyway, this is, we digress, okay? The, 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 we, the, <laughs> the complicated things here, right? Yeah. So, but it's so funny is that she was like, there's no doping in skating. And I was like, oh, okay. Cause you don't, you don't argue with that. Right? Yeah. Cause clearly you can't have the conversation. Yeah. Hour later, she calls me back. I have contemporaneous notes of all of this as it's going on during the Olympics, by the way, because I was covering this around the clock and I started to realize, so, well, I think I realized when Galena was in the lobby of the ice house saying that we should take Ilya Malin in over Jason Brown because we could just lower Ilya's places by two spots and secure another dance medal. That's when we knew what she was talking about, about maneuvering things at the highest level, right? Like they're playing chess while some of these American coaches are like, you know, checkers, right? Like, yeah. So... Yeah, and this was like a normal conversation she was having and everyone was just nodding. This was regular, okay? And skating like, yes, yeah, send Ilya. People will see how good he is on practice. We'll get his spot lowered by two, get another dance spot, and this is going to be perfect. Because in their minds, what happened in 94 was that that guy Koritek, who was the father of Bayul's coach, who was on the panel in singles, in their mind, he supported, he moved to Canada, right? And that's why Oksana moved to Galena. And in their minds, oh, he moved to Canada and he supported that Canadian pair over Shishkova and Naumov. So in 
in the Soviet point of view, Shishkoma and Naumov were robbed in Lillehammer, and that's what they really believe. Interesting. The same way they all really believe that Torval and Dean deserve to be 10th in their first compulsory dance, but were then fabulous elsewhere. And they will have that argument with you to the fuck. They will rip apart that compulsory dance. So I've then I've like, and you know, saying anything about Torval and Dean is like, right. Sacrilege, right. But then like you go back and you like that point of view is like interesting, right? Like, I don't know that I agree with it, but at least we'll look at it, right? Like, what are they saying? So it's the same thing with in this interview with Debbie Thomas and Shiver. You know, Debbie won the two figures two and three in 88, but was fourth in the first one. And she goes, Yeah, but Kira Ivanova makes a huge error on that first figure. And they just overlook it. And like you're watching it and you're like, I don't know if I see it. Mm. But then like, you're watching it and you're like, and and I want like the people of the figures to weigh in because Debbie really believes that Kira's first figure was bullshit. Mm. Uh, well, you remember, um, I don't know if it was Frank or if it was Linda that was telling us after they went on the ice after the figures competition in 1980 and looked at Dagmar Lertz's patterns and they were like, mm-hmm. you know how people get bitchy about the IJS and like they debate that call and this one. To me, there is nothing more elitist and fabulous than when old school skaters debate the figures. Mm. For them, this is like a religion. Mm. It's, it's like people don't understand like for these people the figures is like who is really the skater and it's so fascinating to like watch them like go in on this like if they like someone's loop technique or they like someone's this or that and i think that that's kind of the discussions that we need to be having as we move forward and we'll get to that with lila and lewis's rocky program because that is yes um, so with this new series, I think it's going to be huge for skating, I think. And they're trying to get an HBO here. So I think it'll be, um, fantastic. So. Well, that's good because even when it was Battle of the Blades that she was doing in Canada and we were watching, like it did take a lot of. You know how we always debate about how people in skating don't get it? I was a guy with a blog from my parent, from my parents' house in my childhood bedroom while I was going back to school. Sandra made sure that I had DVDs FedEx to my house 18 hours after it aired every week that that series aired for the entire time. But that's smart. She that's gets getting marketing. it out in any time. There's a producer who gets marketing. Yeah. Look at what she has done with Lindsay. Look at how working with Sandra and look at how motivated Lindsay is after the last two years. Yeah. Like this is a genius that is like gets it. So. We were debating about my music and fighting back and forth this week, but it was good. It was good. You know, like it was a good, healthy thing. Um, The USFS is demanding a seat at the Valjeva hearing. So Christine Brennan was like talking to me about it. She might go. I'm like, please go. Please go. Yes. Uh, Shevetsky will appear. I don't think a Terry's going to go. Do you? No. No. She's going to let them hang. Yes. I think to separate yourself from it is to forget how much you were involved. Yeah. Like, Yuri's wife was in the ice show with a Terry, right? Mm. And I always joke with her because Yuri's wife is like, <laughs> like Sofia Vergara in Russian form. So like, and so I will, I'll be like, oh, Daria, you seem like a much better skater than a Terry, but somehow she got all the featured parts in the show. Because if you watch that, oh, and Terry is the weakest skater right. in that show, but she has every featured role. This is the genius of a Terry. And she'll just like look at you. Like she just David Petrovich or whatever she calls me. You know, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just you just need to give the Russians the kind of sass because they're gonna talk to you like you're an idiot, right? Yeah. So you just need to give it right back to them. That is the key. Show yeah. no weakness, right? So. <laughs> Not my MO, yeah. <laughs> Jonathan, that's how they deal with everything in life. I know, also not my MO, yeah. Nikolai, when I broke that Nikolai, that about Annabelle and uh, Russia, which was true, he texted me and he was like, don't be giving an opinion on Annabelle. To which I said to him, she is an athlete competing in international competitions. That is not possible. 
you should have put her in a different profession if you do not want her discussed publicly. An opinion would be Annabelle has very little chance of being successful for Russia because now all of the top teams are with Julin. That is an opinion. Yeah. That is did it re was there a response? <laughs> Jonathan, I saw him in person after it. He was at the Kriegor camp. And? Which I didn't agree with and let them know that I didn't agree with him being there. Because people that live in ice dance like lose their right. death reflex because everyone is like so corrupt. No, I just pretended like he didn't exist. Like he was too people over me and I was going to have a conversation. Who is he? He used to be famous, right? Like he's a scumbag who, you know, we, we married that girl when she turned 18. Please. You think I have any respect for him as a human being? None. Okay. No. None. All right. That's disgusting. So is he a good teacher? Yeah. So that's that. So anyway, as we move along, the USFS is going to be there. I think Terry is going to let them all just. So they are going to be there. The USFS is going, yeah. And um, you know that we're getting to the point where skaters are trying to get out of Russia. Like Samadelkina wants to go to Kazakhstan and they're trying to hold her back. You know, they wanted Annabelle to go to France, right? And Russia is trying to hold on to them. And it's really like this like pissing match because everyone's like, don't talk about the Russians because of the war. And it's like, no, you have to understand what's going on inside of Russia right now. You mm -hmm. have to at least understand, to understand what's happening in figure skating. You have to understand that these skaters are trying to leave. Petrosian could be one of the biggest skaters in the world, potentially, if she went to Armenia. She will never be allowed because she's one of the top chosen ones under Atari. They now, like, own her. Mm. But she will never be able to compete internationally if they're not allowed back. Right. So we're getting to this point where, like, it's closing in on these people. And somehow Diana was the only one let out. Funny that. So when they say the the hearing is closed then, what yeah. are they implying? Just that it's not... It's not open to the public, right? Like, so you ever like watch those trials on TV where they have like the sketch artist and you're like, can we please just have the OJ, can we please just have like the OJ, like we can watch Marsha Clark and Johnny Cochran. It's what we all want, but they don't want a circus. It's like that. Okay. Where you know it's happening and it's completely unsatisfying, right? Oh, it's like sorry. Trump sorry. is indicted and we don't see it on TV. We all want to see 24 hour seven footage like this is OJ, but they know that that is too crazy for the country and that we cannot do that. That okay. would be anarchy. Okay. The same thing would happen if this Valieva case were. So, who is attending the federations that were involved in the team? Of oh, the yes. And like WADA. Like the federations are trying to get a seat. And Russia is pissed that the US is trying because now they're trying to force. Because you can't, because you have to realize this decision doesn't just hinge on like Valieva and the medals. This is going to set major precedent. Russia had so much power to sweep things under the rug. Listen, that's so unique of a thing with Kim Yuna. They're. Right pushing that out and being like, no, don't talk about it, which is one of the biggest scandals in history. And about the fact that she had scratches on her bottle and they're just being like, it's old information. We don't know, blah, 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 right? This is, they are gonna sit down and discuss the volume, whether or not her grandfather, you know, vomited in a glass. And then she drank it. Right, yeah. and then drank it, right? While these same people are telling you, you can't take a drug to skate that beautifully. No, but you can take a drug to skate 10 hours a day and recover and do it again the next day. Right. And that's the genius. Yeah. It's not in some magical ability, it's in the recovery. Yeah. In the science of how you train every single day. And that's why what they do in Novogorsk is so brilliant with the electrodes on the head. Because they're, do you realize that the Russians give people treatments for PTSD after practice so that you can deal with the Terry every single day? So do they think that she is a healthy coach? Well, they clearly know she's not, but they don't care. They don't give it. Yeah. It's like the army. They view this as doing whatever it takes to win. Whatever it takes. Yeah. You have to go in the history of why people left Stanislav Zhuk in the 80s in Russia to understand everything. Okay? Because that story was covered up for a long time.
I mean, you can go in the archives and find that. And who was he involved with of his students, allegedly, and other things. So when you go, and how did Zueva get them away from Zhuk, and why? And what was happening with different main students of his? And I think you can go back through history, because there are so, there are many, and that this is like a fascinating thing about what they're willing to do. I mean, remember, and you have to look at Zhuk, because he was the first coach. Remember, he created the one and a half pair. And this, a Terry will build on because they all, they do all that research of the minister of sports and all the research on skating. And what they found with Zhuk, Gordieva, everyone after Ronina, um, all of those, the ones that did the quad twist, it was a girl about the size of Yulia Libnitskaya in 2012. And they chucked him up to do quads in the air. And then a Terry came along and had them do quads on the ice. And it was the same thing. You watch a Russian skater from Nagano, Look at the musculature of Slitska, totally Sova, yeah, uh, Malina, right? All of the different countries. Oh, Sova, my favorite back in right. the day. They yeah. picked strong people who had speed and power and muscles, right? And then all of a sudden, they switch. Now, Tukta Misha was the exception. She was a Mishan girl, right? But all of a sudden, Terry comes in and she wants them to look like that girl that was in the pair. And do you know what happened to those girls in the pair when they got bigger? They lost all their jumps. Look at Pershina over time, okay? Uh, there's so many um, uh, examples, right? And they lost their ability to rotate. You can, any of these. And they were also clones. There was, there's a performance that you can watch of all of the one and a half pairs, three of them skating together because they used to do exhibitions. They look like clones. Like it will like boggle your mind, but then you start to realize that this is really sick, it's right? Yeah. It's a formula of the one and a half. And by the way, Gordy and Grinkoff were the greatest one and a half pair of all time. They just had the choreography and the love story of Zueva, which these other teams didn't have. Right. And that's what Marina added to make them so iconic. Right. Yeah. And then, but remember, even Katya started losing her jumps, but Katya fought back through having a baby and puberty and everything. But if you watch them in the 1990 season, it was falling apart, just right. like it, with the Atari skaters, where it falls apart and because it's all based on them being small. Yeah. And you, and you look, and it's the same like timeline. So the Russians, now that the age range is changing, will eventually have to recalibrate or figure out how to keep them tiny longer. Like when you talk about Anna Sherbakova and she gives those interviews about what she did or didn't need at the Olympics, remember that she was 18 years old trying to stay that small. And that's mm -hmm. what this is really about. And that's what people say that you can't talk about because it's body shaming. And they use that as like an excuse to get around the real issue of what's happening, right? So they're, and meanwhile, they are sitting with the electrodes on after practice. They're taking the trimetazidine. They're doing all of this stuff. The same people, Galina called me an hour after she said there was no doping in skating, suddenly she knew everything about trimetazidine. Oh yeah, that drug. Oh yes, that's just for card. And you're like, why do you know about a senior citizen drug? Right. right. Oh yeah, there's no doping in skating, Kalina. Yes, I'm just a stupid American that you're talking to. That's fine. Yeah, got yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. Fascinating. I'm ready. You're, uh, Jonathan, this trial is so big. People in gymnastics look sideways. Jessica O'Baron will yell about Nasser, and she's right. But they also are not opening their eyes because so much of this sports journalism is focused on track and field, um, things like a hockey player, like very like heteronormative sports. Mm. Because people can conceptualize that you take a steroid. But even that is about recovery. But they think about steroid means big muscle. In this case, these are metabolic modulators to allow you to train longer. Yeah. So it's not just about getting stronger. It's about the amount of repetitions that you can do again and again and again. And then they're doing the stuff with their body. And then the Russians do the sauna with the ice bath for recovery. And all of this stuff, they're really geniuses about. Because to them, this is like warfare. That's how they view it. Yeah. That's why CSKA. That's a, that's a military rink. This is the mindset, right? It's very different than in the US when Raphael talks about this. So they are doing it. And it's just going to be, I think, like fascinating to see how the sport develops with and without them because it's almost going in two 
Right. Two different sports. Yeah. And how long can Putin keep funding this? Um, how long can he keep funding this, um, you know, sports propaganda parade if they're not going to be in international competitions and they're at war? So all of it continues, but I think it's a really fascinating time for our sport. And I think that it's something that people need to pay attention to with Russia, because I think that they have been, I think there was so much emotion about just don't pay attention to Russia. Just don't, they, they don't exist. She's like, no, 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 no. They very much do. And they're yeah. not going away. Yeah. Okay. They're not stopping. They are moving around to get better. They are calibrating. They're studying what the other schools are doing and they're trying to keep getting better. And I think until the ISU really cracks down on doping and these practices, that nothing will change in the sport. Yeah. And if they come back too early, I think it'll turn off people in a huge way. I think there will be such outcry if this team medal in Valjeva goes the other way. And that is why the USFS is putting the person there so that they can force it and they can say no. Like, will someone from Canada or Japan be there also? I don't think so. And because everyone's still afraid of Russia. Everyone is still playing chess, right? The USFS didn't say, Russia, you're a lying sack of whatever. They're just saying, we want a spot at the hearing. Everyone is afraid of what will happen when the Russian judges get back in. Mm. You, vengeance, right? Like they will, they don't play, right? You remember that Warsaw Cup, how they got Diana to the Olympics. Right. You know, like, they still rig competitions when their coaches are at other things. When everyone goes to Dennis 10 Memorial, because they know that they can control the panel and get every single team the score they needed last season. Yeah. What? And they're doing it at Dennis 10, which is an homage to a beloved skater who died. Right. And they're like, let's all go to Dennis 10. Look at every dance team on that panel. Right. It's why when they had to decide the Azerbaijan team for Worlds, they made them go to Germany because they didn't want Montreal to have too much control or Marina to have too much control. So, and that's what makes skating so fascinating. So let's discuss that Rocky program, Jonathan. I mean, and I'm in Philadelphia, so what a timely <laughs> time. Yeah. So? <laughs> so these ice baths, I'm like on one, okay? I'm just like more energized and like ready to go, Jonathan. Like, sorry, okay? No, 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 it's good. I, I mean- Better We're two plus weeks in, this is what happens. You watch all those videos about 30 days, well, Becoming more outspoken. All right, go. <laughs> Let it all hang out. Okay. So we have talked about several times on, on, on the show about the difference between interpreting and beautiful movement mm -hmm. and pantomime kitsch. And I cannot stand pantomime kitsch because out of 8,000 programs I've seen with it, I don't think I've seen one done effectively. Uh, so when this start, listen, everyone's going to say, oh, this is a show program because of the music and the concept. The music, all in all, not so bad. Actually, some of it built into like this cinematic sort of idea, but it was building intensity. It was recognizable and fun, but yet still powerful and yet reflective in certain moments where it takes the wrong turn is the jump roping, is the push-ups, is the fake sparring, is the spending too much time at the barriers. Like, it was too much pitch for me to appreciate that the concept actually probably could have worked. Now- Can we I pause one second on the concept? Because to me, it comes down to, listen, the International Academy of Montreal has gotten to a place where they can do whatever they want. They have how many countries, 20-ish, 23-ish, right? How many, they can do what they want artistically. But sometimes I think when you have the pressure artistically of you, that other people are gonna have to see it and say no, it can create like an editing, right? And to me, the ideation of this is where it all starts from. Mm. To me, it starts at the genesis of the idea because the, the genesis of most free dances and, and really because of what the IJS has done to the sport 
it comes down to the choreo sequences is the hook of the program, right? Mm -hmm. That's the heart, that's the meat. And everything is judged around that, right? With the footwork and everything is created around that. This one is about them boxing. I'm sorry, but two years ago, didn't we see two people sword fighting by the right. same choreographer? So isn't this just an updated version of that? And but a less effective one, in my opinion. Right, but if your idea is a sequel to another program by another team, are we not all going to compare and think that it's cheaply done to begin with? Yeah. Starts with the idea. And I think the idea, what has made uh, Lila- And the team has done genius things with camp, but to me, this is the most panned program I have seen since that. that's entertainment. And I actually would love to see Lila and Lewis say what their idea was, whatever. Because Marie France might keep going. She is a strong woman. So if she believes in this idea, they're going to keep doing it. Like, I mean, I get that they clearly see them as more showy razzle dance. How many times after Hubble and Donahue ma made it big with their blues style and then they tried to become lyrical, how many times did they do a program where you were like, eh, and they kept going? Yeah. I think every season, right? Yeah, the argument being, I wish they had stayed different. Here they're almost- Everyone says it, right? Yeah. But they're trying to keep them the same and in sort of the wrong way, the, the programs that have worked, instead of going back to what could be the gimmick, I just sort of like, what could allow them to perform and engage an audience? And I just don't know that this is it, especially since all of the rhythm dances this season are gimmick rhythm dances. So now we're, we're kind of, I mean, I think we've established the rhythm dance this year may not be anyone's favorite, but so now then to do a free dance on top of that, which is yet another gimmick, it's it's just growing tiresome. They could have given us something razzle dazzle, unexpected and performative that's less embarrassing. I so think. I asked your best friend for her opinion, Queen Renee Roca. Yes. Well, I, I think I, we know what she would say. I understand the concept of Rocky. Yeah. But why? I asked another person who is at Worlds. Ice Dance has a long history of taking marginally talented, but skinny, possibly rich girls and selling us something we are willing to buy. Grishuk and Navka rose to fame with their slinky, sexy, look at me styles. Lobachova was the skinny love interest who was not a strong skater. It's just always interesting to watch the flavor of the day, what aesthetic is in vogue. Truly magnificent dancers with glorious turnout and toe point and alignment seem to be a thing of the past. Now it's oh, interesting. He is, he is capable of that. And together they are so charismatic and Lila is key to that because like I, she really has a mastermind. But I think that they have pushed this campy style. And remember I said about it with the eighties, I said, this is gonna push them. I think their eighties rhythm dance is brilliant. I think it's perfect for them. I, I think it's the best one we have seen, right? Because yeah. it's the least kitschy in a way. And it's so interesting to me is that their rhythm dance is up here and their free dance is here. And it's because they are pushing and they're taking those risks, which is what you need to do. But unfortunately, when you take these risks, you get it. And then, and then you get into the quality. And here's the thing is that, so one of my coaches is a caller and one of them is a judge, right? And one of them was just looking at it. I'm not going to say who. And they were saying, the problem is on the one foot, they just don't have enough complexity or dynamic movement or intricacy. And that's kind of the rub I'm on that. A little bit more simplistic. Like, look at Hawaii and Baker do a one foot and then look at this team. And they go, that's not above a plus two, maybe a plus three. And in dance, you need a plus four or five where they're moving into the medals, right? You need a plus four, plus five. And like almost every element, right? Remember when Virtue and Moira were against Papadakis and Cicero? They weren't like, we were comparing fours and fives across right. the board. Yeah. This is a two or a three, okay? The twizzle is the same thing and they slow down and they're not covering the same ice. I think the boxing is cheap. I think it's an interesting concept. I don't love the music and I don't think that the music moves people anymore. Maybe it did in the 70s. Hmm. But I think that this is kitsch for kitsch. And yeah. I don't, yeah. I think that they are better 
than this material and can come up with something great. And yep. hopefully this experience will push them to create something that's better because in my opinion, this is a flop. Now, maybe they're going to push this so far, but if they want this to work, they have to push this program so hard that we start to believe in it. But right now it's emphasizing their weaknesses for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's showing all they have to do to compensate and knowing that like I stands almost reward. We hate it. We're paying attention to why they are not as good as the Cana Danes or why they're not as good as Olivia Smart, right? Yeah. Together what separates them in the actual yes. stage. Yeah. As opposed to Gaga, which made us appreciate them, have fun and forget and be like, yeah, but look at how inventive, look how charming, look how great this is. To me, this program goes the other way. I felt the same way about their Lion King at the beginning of the season and I never thought it really worked. Yeah, it was. It wasn't a total flop, but it was certainly wasn't it. Uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable to see. Two I'd rather see Lion doing African dancing. Right. It was just not. Hmm. It. I. But I. I still rather would see Lion King than this. Their problem is. Lila's knee is a little bit knobby. No matter what, it's like Taryn Humphrey. I'm bow legged. I can't change that. Right. I could go to the surgeon, whatnot. I'm going to be bow legged like Dominic Dawson to the end of time. We try to figure out on my camel how to make it look like my leg is in bed. And sometimes it does, but how to get the right extension. Everything that Lila and Lewis do, they have to mask about the fact that she has a little bit of a knobby knee. The same way about Piper Gillis, who also doesn't have a great knee or extension. And she's a very tight quad muscle when you look at Piper. And that's why they don't win at the end of the day when you look at it. And I think with Lila and Lewis, they have to work around that. And when they have weaker material, you're staring at that weakness. Yeah. You're staring at it being like, is that what we really want? I think they're so genius and so smart with the way that they pick programs and they have been, but this I think pushed it over the top. Mm. This I think it pushed it into the level because there's jumped always the back it jumped the shark. Yeah. <laughs> there's always that it's Fonzie on the motorcycle, yeah. right? There's always that backlash in ice dance when one team is when one school has too much that they become like insulated and then other people can attack it, right? And right now the ISU is really everyone in ice dance. And it's hard because Marie France and Patch are so beloved by everyone that there's like the likability tour of all time. And at the same time, everyone knows that they're playing the literature game with all the judges. Listen, Chalk and Bates won with a record score and a fall at World. Really? You think that they were better than Virtue and Moyer? And like, I would say that to Marie Fonce's face. Yeah, I think they were great. Do I think that they were better than Papadakis and Cicerone and Virtue and Moyer? Don't piss on my leg and tell me it's raining, right? Like, I'm sorry, right? That's a joke. Yeah. Um, so them, right, winning with a fall. Remember what happened with Virtue and Moyer won with a stumble at 2017 Worlds. The next season, how far did DDA push Papadakis' scissor on? So far so that it took a neck thing coming undone for Virtue and Moyer to win the Olympics and them being at their absolute best of all time. Those yeah. things came together. Now we're seeing Montreal had this stumble and they had... Fear and Gibson, who finished higher than people felt that they deserved at Worlds. And that was starting to get into that, how powerful is Montreal thing. And you have to realize that together, the other people like the Carolines and the Barbara Fusar Polis are all looking at it and being like, how are we going to compete with Montreal? And Barbara Fusar Poli was open about it in the interview when Dario Cherzano was with her. Now they're all looking at this. And when you have a program like this in the Rocky, people are going to point to this in Montreal and be like, how do we take this down. This is the program they're going to attack. Yeah. Oh, I... I Same way they attacked the Shibutanis in 2012 when they went, after they had their surprise bronze medal when Marina and Igor split, the other teams, they went, they couldn't go after Virtue and Moyer or Davis and White, so they just slaughtered the Shibutanis and pushed them down. And maybe Montreal has more judges that they can prevent it, but there will be people that will go after this. And this is the one. And I think this year, Montreal is going to try to say, how do we get two teams on the panel at a home worlds in Canada? But do they have to kind of let Gillis and Poirier get a medal? Because otherwise the Canadians, like, it's very weird. Is that like, you have like Canadian skating and then Quebecois skating. And Montreal is becoming so powerful that it's almost like true Canadians are like behind Gillis and Poirier. 
because like now Montreal works for whichever country is in vogue. And because Canada, they're not like pushing virtue and Moyer, it makes the Canadian skating establishment very uncomfortable because they can push whatever team in whatever country they want. And that's where you're going to get the rub is like internally in Skate Canada, what do they do when the most powerful ice dance academy in the world is in Canada, even though, you know, Quebec would like to be its own country sometime. How do you push that when Caroline, who represents kind of the Canadian skating school, can't compete with them? And look at how Caroline's junior world, junior Grand Prix champion final team did at the competition to start this season. Like they don't have a prayer. How do you stop? And that's internally what's going on in ice dance. So, and that's why you see, even though Russia is out of competition, they have the teams going to Zhulin. They have Morozov taking his daughter to Krylova. They are trying to mastermind this situation so that they compete with each other and that they can compete in the world. And I think that that's just what you have to kind of pay attention to what's going on in ice dance right now. It's why I thought the Dar it's why I thought the Diana Davis and Gleb could compete in the U S it had nothing to do with their talent. It had the fact that they were old school judges who helped Davis and white get to the top. were interested in um, Davis and smoking. Mm. So Terry was their mother. They know the judges that are involved, in my opinion, and they could have made that team happen. In Ice Dance, you just, it's like selling a pop artist, right? It's like, can Madonna sing or is Madonna an idea? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Never has she been able Ice to. Ice Dance is the same. You are not just selling the skating. You're selling the program, the chemistry, the team, the idea, the packaging, the whole deal is part of this, the coach, the story, and that's the rub, so. Yeah, or no. What did you think of the junior team from the U.S. or the Junior Grand Prix? When I watched their programs, I thought that they did the 80s okay, but I just wanted more speed from the blades from them anyway. If they want to move forward, I thought, yes, they're the best juniors in the U.S. perhaps, but I just don't see the power and the raw skating that's going to take them at the senior level. And some basic, I mean, again, as twizzles have become such a benchmark for your ability and placement, there is really struggle. Yeah. I don't feel confident when they're doing the twizzles. And I think until that's remedied, it's all sort of a mood point. She does hit stunning positions. She they have the ingredients, Jonathan. She has extension. She needs the power. Yeah. And they're Russian. Their coaches, I don't know, I'm forgetting who they are, but they're Russian and not like a tacky way. Listen, they're picking the free dance was like, da, da, da. I mean, we've heard a like, thousand times. wearing like a People still on use that music. Early aughts, we heard that, right? I remember you were that, right? We've heard this a million times. It's safe, not bad. Not rocky, right? We're okay. Safe, but classy, they need the power. Yeah. Otherwise, but, they're together. Yeah, it, I mean, it was interesting. The French, although safely behind the Americans here, interest me far more. Yes. But in, they seem like they have something to say, even though it's a little rough around the edges, also with the twizzle issues and stuff. But it's interesting. It's striking. They had a very spicy kiss and cry. I don't know what was happening in the discussion there, but they just seem like they have this fire. And of course, for ice dance, especially, that's what I'm looking for. The American tree dance came across a bit as generic loveliness, as we will talk about, like the epidemic in the women's event here. Um, but I kind of preferred the French, if I'm being honest. Yeah, well, I agree with you about the French were great. Uh, um, and I, it reminded me of what's going on in Canadian Paris right now. Because last week we saw Leah and Trent compete, and we've also seen Deanna. Leah and Trent are very good, but they're very workmanlike skaters. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of the Hartzels. They did their elements, but it was very meat and potatoes. Yeah. There was no sophistication. There was no style. There was nothing. And then you have Deanna and Max. And they're all, everyone's always kind of like, look, she's American in Canada. She's older. But they're trying to like push the envelope. They're being and, much more interesting. Yeah. And to me, that's the team I'm more interested in. But you know, Megan Duhamel, who's just a technician, is going to be behind Leah and Trent. For the and elements, but the elements have to to create a sum. I think Deanna and Max have like the vision of skating, like the bigger vision. 
Like I told Alexa, I think it's so interesting that she's skating with Tim LaDuke, that she's coaching with Tim LaDuke and she won worlds with Brandon and they were great. But to me, they didn't have the style. And I think that if Alexa skated with Tim LaDuke, they would have had that style. And, Tim- yeah. and personality wise, off ice, they would have had that banter like Adam and Ashley because they're both feisty. Right. And that's what we never got with Ashley Kane because she's more pageant. Right. And Alexa is more fire. And I think Alexa and Timothy would have had this like spark that mm-hmm. would have. Yeah. Listen, Alexa won worlds with Brandon. So who does she care? What right. does she care? Okay. Right. Nor should she. Okay. She can take her gold medals for the rest of her life. Okay. That is, but, but it's it interesting that they're coaching together. But you know? even as you're talking about like your series about where it's about the purity of skating and the joy of skating. And I, so- by the way, I think they can be very good coaches with the balance of Alexa, Timothy, and Chris. Because Alexa and Chris have that old school Delilah meat and potatoes. Then they got classed up with John Nix and Jenny Mino. And now they're adding Timothy LeDuc, who has the original Russian point of view when we fell in love with Timothy and Dee Dee Lang. Right. Oh my God. I loved their program in 2014 at Nationals. Yeah. Um, I think the lines of Timothy and Alexa would have been something that we loved that from the Delilah school, they'd be like, yeah, but Brandon and Alexa can do a huge twist. So what are you talking about? Right. But maybe Timothy and Alexa could have done a huge twist too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I saw, I saw. As Alexa once told me, there's always a butt with you. And she wasn't wrong. She was not perfectionist. We're not wrong. Okay. Yeah, but she would be the same. She's the same. <laughs> the, the, Anna's the same. She's the same. Tara Kane is the same. Yeah. So mm-hmm. the the event that here that was most troubling to me, just like it was at Junior Worlds, was the the women's event, because to me this is where the the plight of this IJS lack of pure skating, lack of perspective, lack of artistic point of view was most evident. I found this a very, very tough watch for me. And I want to reiterate, I don't say that the skaters are not capable of it. It's just not being encouraged in the moment. And no, so- it's ruining the sport. And it's why we don't have good shows. The shows in Japan are built on star power, right? But not about pure skating. Yeah. You need skating to be something that if you turn it on in the middle of it, you watch Paul Wiley's JFK program and then tell me if the IJS is the right thing. Watch Peggy yeah. Fleming at 68, the Nationals. And if you and if you are going to be like, no, I prefer the IJS, I think that's fine. My personal opinion, ruining the sport. Yeah, ruining but I, even we saw in Yu Song Kim, like, Yes, IJS requires this and IJS requires that. Her opening here, she had the most cluttered, frantic, non-performative, like small in, just like voguing almost for the start of her program. And the music was doing nothing, but it was one open chord. And I was like, yes, I know IJS is a problem, but IJS didn't tell you you had to do that. You don't get any extra points for cluttering your choreography before you've even begun skating. Like, I just don't know this excessive extra thing. Like, yes, I know things need transitions. Yes, I know there needs to be these clusters of blah, 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 blah. But every choreographic moment to mimic that same sort of like excessive transitional crowded clustery sort of quality to it is what's such a turnoff to me. I'm like, oh, well, if I'm just gonna watch or look at the ice, and again, just sort of like do all these frantic movements that mean nothing emotionally. They don't match the music. They don't enhance the beauty or enjoyment of the program. I don't know what we're doing. And I don't know what what box in the IJS system you think you're checking with that kind of choreography. And I don't mean to single her out. It was just such a, a visual example of it in her free skate. And again, I don't think it's her fault. I think she's a talented skater that's doing what she's told to do. It's the teams, it's the ideas. Like, here's a good opener. Do 85 gestures in the first 10 seconds. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. I agree with you, Jonathan. Oh. Jacob Sanchez was so fantastic. But the I short don't- short program especially, yeah. He was so charming, but I don't, think that he was quite ready with the triple axles at this stage. 
but he is so charming and he is the right skater at the right time for us figure skating. He has the charisma. He has an athletic ability. This is someone they need to support financially and in terms of like direction. And that doesn't mean go to Tammy. It doesn't mean send everyone no. to gamble for a 20 minute lesson. You need to pair him with someone with experience who can mentor because his coaches, Larissa Selezhneva and Oleg Makarov coach their daughter, Susha Makarova. And at the last moment, they, co they put Susha with Galena and Victor when Johnny Weir was training but they clearly have raised a skater to get right to this point, almost like you're treading water right beneath the surface. And they just need someone to guide them to break the surface because they've proven now they can take a talented skater and raise them. Mm. So he just needs that like next little, 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 little. Yeah. He's huge. He has this charisma. I, last summer, he they were they were in Brewster for a week or something when their rink was getting done, and they were Larissa and Oleg brought their skaters, and he was doing double axel after triple toe, but like floaty and athletic, and he can spin in the air, and he loves to skate, and you can see that, and that's what you don't see in some of these programs. You're telling me are cluttered. You don't see that love of skating that he has. Right. Right. He is such a bright star that can help. U.S. figure skating, he could be pushing the depth now, competing, you know, for an Olympic spot if he gets good enough. And that is someone they need to. And he's also, I think, one of the strengths, not white, right? Which is a strength. Look at gymnastics. It's representing every color under the rainbow is finding a way to succeed. Skating is not there yet. And I think when skating gets there, it will be beneficial in the yeah, U.S. Of course, yeah. The and balance the pressure bit. of being first after the short just got to him in the I mean the, the triple axel had that big lean in, yeah. in the free skate, but but the short program in particular was a was a really exciting moment. He's spectacular. Yeah. He can be so good. We saw um the Korean boy Mickey Seo was fantastic, so good here. He was when we were watching train. I think he has that potential. So much height in the jumps, too. The knees are great. Yeah. And there was a skater from New Zealand who won a medal, which is huge on the Junior Grand Prix. Yeah. I mean, and I think it's really important for the diversity of skating that we see different countries meddling, even if it means the U.S. or Russia doesn't win every time. Because skating is a global sport the way it's doing right now. We need to... And held in Bangkok, this event, that was very odd to me. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with that. I know that's is part of the theory about spreading skating around. I think there has to be a balance of making it, the audience is filled, exposing new, like it's this balance of trying to get it in and it's not quite right. But I think some of the intentions are good, right? But I think the, I think the amount of ingredients to make figure skating strong in a country, so, 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 so many right there are so many that it's hard but i think that they're trying to spread the skating to these other countries but i think it takes a lot right i think greg marson once said if you he was talking about um he and suzanne talk about marketing about gymnastics and he said if you want to build you need coverage in the newspaper you need marketing you need to host championships and you need to win and that is how you build a sport and you have to remember that it's entertainment and if you can remember all of those things, and then Suzanne rudely said, if you don't do marketing, you deserve to compete from no one. And I think we saw that at US Nationals this year in figure skating in San Jose. Yeah. You deserve to compete in front of no one. So, yeah. and that's not the skaters, that's the organization. Yeah. And I'm not talking about a once every six months YouTube clip of 30 no. seconds where like someone's getting coffee and asking a dumb question about what their favorite color. So that's not what we need. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think that that is the point. And yeah, hopefully, you know, Tara Lipinski and her husband are, they're producing a podcast about infertility and their journey. Which I saw is, her post. Yeah. I thought that their meddling was so well done, was hmm. so fantastic and i think her husband's so smart she's smart in a driven way like think about how she maneuvered her career 
like her, don't like her, she had a vision to get yeah. to the top and was driven. And I think you see that when she put her mind to something like meddling, she's capable of really pushing something. It was so excellently done. That, that. And I think you can tell with this fertility, but I would love to see them follow US skaters and get like a Netflix show or a Peacock show or something the way Dominique Dawes followed uh, Gymnast with Golden. And I think that Tara and Todd would be the right people to do it. Hmm. I think that they could help follow a Donovan, uh, sorry, follow a Jacob Sanchez, a Donovan Carrillo from Mexico who is in Canada. Like just like find the right people in North America to get this market, right? Like I would say like Donovan, Jacob, Amber Glenn, these are like interesting stories. I think you need someone with subtitles talking on the screen. I think you need someone with coaches of all, like you need to show that everyone can come to the table in skating and love it. So Agreed. yeah, you know, I'm excited to see their podcast. I think meddling was great. I still hope they do the Atari documentary. NBC certainly has footage of her training when Johnny went over to visit. And I think that Todd and Tara would be the right ones to do that documentary. It depends yeah. how far NBC wants to push it, right? Because it depends what happens on the outcome of this trial. And does NBC want to say that all the Russians are doping or does that damage the Olympics? But again, after- How do you push it? Yeah, but after Beijing, it's clear they're not in a good way anyway. No. So yeah, something has to change. Yeah. But they have all the footage. Think of it. They have Trusova at the Olympics. They have Valjeva walking through the press zone. They have a Terry at her. They have all the ingredients that you need. Yeah. I mean, come on. I think that documentary opens with either Valjeva walking through the press zone with the hood on or Trusova screaming. Or Trusova. Which one is going to like give you more gripping, heartbreaking vibes? Yeah. It's cinematically, that's as a producer, that's incredible. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, also, Gabby Izzo switching to Paris. Yeah, how was your chat with her? You know, she's an interesting person. She's definitely has the personality of a pair girl. If I think about how <laughs> you know, that's someone that could do a triple flip, triple loop. Despite any logic or reason, she willed herself. You know, she's had multiple shoulder surgeries. Maybe she's got longer limbs in a way that's tougher to rotate, like Evan Lysacek, and she wills herself to do things. Then you think she's training with Jose Picard and Deanna Stellato. That's brilliant. And your girl, Julie Marcotte, doing choreography. And Gabby loves Julie, Jonathan. Mm. <laughs> it's quite an interesting use of the word we. <laughs> you know, I just... I'm excited to see it. We need this. We need these different people. I feel like Paris is suddenly interesting. We have Balazs and Chelsea going against Spencer and Emily, going against Misha uh, and his partner. You know, we're seeing all these new pairs pop up who have some potential. Now, Gabby's going to try to compete for Canada, which is going to take a long time. Um, but at least we're seeing teams that are in it for the long haul because U.S. and Canadian pairs really had a a dearth of death, yeah. Last, yeah. especially last year. And we're seeing Danny and Ellie get better. So I think this is interesting. And Danny and Ellie have visited Bruno Marcotte a couple of times. So I'm intrigued about this. I think- oh. uh, Well, and again, of course, at this junior event, no pairs at all. So yeah. again, anything that just sort of like rejuvenates interest in it for yeah. younger skaters, especially would be really important. Also, are you around? There's doing the, they're doing the Dick Button Festival this year, and I feel like we need to go. I feel like we need to go, Jonathan. What is the festival? Second weekend in October in Boston. IDI is going to be there. And Alyssa was talking to me about what it was like performing in front of Cindy Stewart, JoJo, and Dorothy as they were watching them. Those queens, like, sitting in the audience. We need to go. Okay. <laughs> Jonathan, this is your champagne taste. Okay, let's do it then. <laughs> this is your champagne taste. We, okay. need, we need to do this, okay? okay. The, to see Alyssa Sisney as the star of the... And really, why aren't Jeremy and Paulina in it? 
neither one, well, Jeremy makes money in shows in choreographing, but I think this would take him to the next level. And you know, if you have read the articles about her father, I don't think Paulina needs a dime. I think she knows she's a beautiful skater. And I think if she were in IDI with Alyssa, it would be iconic. Yeah. Okay. Well, the more the merrier, yeah. We see that she loves her dance tests and how good she is. Paulina deserves to be the star of this ice show. I'm sorry. She, with Alyssa, come on. They could do a thing together. Come on. I saw a Benoit program skated by Alyssa. I, I thought it was good. Okay. In IDI. I think that would be... This is not Ice Theater of New York. Okay. We are not watching some program rehearsed a handful of times on the ice where they're in a bed sheet. This right. is like rehearsed repertory. Oh, yeah, yeah. But they did have a number where they hugged a lot last year that wasn't my favorite. But you know what? I at least saw it long enough to have an opinion that I didn't love that detail, that it was too much, too much hugging, too much hugging. Okay. But <laughs> loved everything else, you know? Yeah. And if that's, if that's the worst thing is you leave a show and you're like, oh, one number had too much hugging. <laughs> it was spectacular. Yeah, rather have too much hugging than jump roping. Jonathan, you're going to. Okay, oh. you're going, we're going, we're watching it. It's happening. You can be your opera snobby self. You'll wear your new shoes. You can Perfect. get a new outfit. What are you going to wear? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I have to start thinking, yeah. You'll take that class with JoJo on Thursdays and then <laughs> we'll go there, all right? Hold it as it looks sexy, but uh, 